I rhyme and I rip, I rip and I rap. This is the way that Dylan split. I spit hot fire. <laughs> Out of Union Dale, New York, Al Jermaine, Punk Master Sterling! Welcome to MMA Noise. I'm Mike Strack along with Al Jermaine Sterling. Are you the number seventh rank in the world? No, I am actually number five. How are you feeling? You, you no more injuries? You're all, you're all good to go? Um, I wish I could say there's no more injuries. Right. Every single fight camp, there's going to be an injury or two. So um, this is, I feel good though, I feel great. I mean, uh, all I gotta do is get the weight off and get ready to uh, have some fun. Anyhow, let's talk real quick about your opponent. Uh, I think, uh, you know, he's a guy that, you know, he's, he's, he's kind of a journeyman. You know, what, what do you think of him? I think he's a tough guy, man. He's been around the block a couple of times. Um, he's had a bunch of Muay Thai fights, a bunch of MMA fights, about 30 fights or so. And he's gonna bring it, man. He, he knocked out Eddie Wineland in a great fight. The difference is between me and Eddie Wineland and our styles is I like to fight with my hands up and I like to fight with my chin down. So, um. <laughs> no offense, Eddie. No, I, I like Eddie. I think I like Eddie. It's crazy to me that he's. he's cra no, he's just crazy. That's he, like. He, he, it's he, actually yeah, amazing he, that he's been able to get so far yep. with his fight style, but it works. And, you know, whatever works, you don't fix it. But, um, I think he's definitely poses a threat. And I think his best chance of winning are in the early few minutes of the first round and outside of that. Once he gets past that mark, his chances have gone completely out the window, and he's gonna be aware of the human anaconda, and he's gonna feel what it feels like to wear a human Jansport on his back. You ever, uh, you ever uh, execute an anaconda choke? All the time. Yeah, it's one of my favorite chokes. Um, anaconda, love the darts chokes, and I've been working a lot on my, um, what do you call that? Japanese necktie. Nice. Yeah. Anaconda is my favorite because I, I get you, get you up there and then gator roll your ass. Yeah. And then I run up and then I just run up. You know, one of my favorite uh, submissions was an accident. It was Matt Hughes against Ricardo Almeida, and I love Ricardo Almeida, don't get me wrong, but, uh, he, you know, Ricardo shot on him, he did a right, front headlock, head and yes. then, you know, and that's a dirty wrestling move. You know, that's an illegal wrestling move yeah. that Matt did, but it's it's legal in, in MMA, yeah. and he just choked him out, and Ricardo went out. Yeah. It was Because he didn't see it coming. It was like one of those things. I've tried working on that, and it's not an easy choke to get. I think you got to have short, short arms to do it. I don't know. I've tried it. It's not something I'm good at, but... Um, if you leave your neck there, I'm going to strangle you. So how's Mr. Longo treating you? Uh, Longo's great. Always great. Um, great mentor, great coach. And um, he's really just tuning up my, my striking and helping me get my timing down and uh, get ready to, to really either put this guy's lights out, and if I can't put his lights out, take him down and choke him out. So, you know, a lot of people say that you came out of nowhere. Like, you just appeared and were amazing, you know, when you appeared. But explain to me a little bit of the journey that, you, that you've had here up to the UFC. Well, you know, when you turn the lights off, and then you turn the lights on, and the boogeyman is just right there. That's me. So I just appeared out of nowhere. But um, no, my journey has been great, man. I had a good time uh, traveling around the world a little bit and being able to fight at all these different venues. Uh, getting to the UFC has been something unreal for me. And um, I'm living my dreams, man. You know, it's one of those things where I can see the belt right there in front of my sight. And all I have to do is just get past a couple more obstacles, and it's right there. So I'm just taking this one fight at a time, and I'm enjoying the ride, taking it for what it is. A lot of times, you know, there, there's one person who's got the belt, and like, you know, I'll, I'll use George St. Pierre as an, as an example. Even Frankie Edgar at the time, and at, when he had the belt, that it was it was sort of a in flux, and everybody else in the division was in purgatory. But it seems to be now, with the exception maybe of Weidman, that you know every division is up for grabs, don't you think? And like you're you're like one fight away from a title shot. Yeah, um, yeah, man. This no one's really got the uh, the division on lock. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. Um, the one person I will say is my boy, Chris Weidman. <laughs> I think he's got the division held down right now. And uh, I think my division is it's up for grabs. You've got Dominic Cruz who just came back. So I think the belt's going to be changing hands quite a bit. So um, I, I predict Cruz winning that fight. And then I predict that I eventually get to the, to the belt. And I come there and take what I what I feel is mine. I actually believe I Quinta will be champion as well. I, I think that Longo is going to have three champions very soon. You included. What yeah. do you think of that? I, I think that's um, something that we're going for right now. And I know that's something Ray wants, and then I think Ray would be content with what he's done in the sport. Base, how low can you go? Death Row, what a brother know. Once again, the comes the incredible. Oh, Rob yeah. Animal, peace, propaganda said number one. 5 -0 said freeze, and I got none. Should have told him that I really had a gun. Yeah, you should drop the mic. You should drop the mic. <laughs> bitch, that's it. The interview is over. <laughs> My name is Aljamain the Funk Master Sterling, and you're watching MMA Noise on Louder Noise. <laughs>